Muhammad. Allahumma sayyala Muhammad wa ali Muhammad. Allahumma sayyala Muhammad wa ali Muhammad. أعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله رب العالمين وبه نستعين والصلاة والسلام على خاتم النبيين والمرسلين سيدنا ومولانا أبي القاسم المصطفى محمد اللهم صل على محمد على آله الطيبين الطاهرين المعصومين وصحابته المنتجبين وعلى جميع أنبياء الله والمرسلين إن شاء الله tonight we continue with our class of tafsir the best demands of the Quran and we continue with our tafsir of short surahs, inshallah. And the surah of tonight, inshallah, is surah number 113, surah al-falaq. All of you, I think you know it. It's a very short surah. Everyone knows it. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala say, بَعْدَ عُوذُ بِاللَّهِ مِنَ الشَّيْطَانِ الرَّجِيمِ بِسْمِ اللَّهِ الرَّحْمَنِ الرَّحِيمِ قُلْ أَعُوذُ بِرَبِّ الْفَلَقِ مِنْ شَرِّ مَا خَلَقِ وَمِنْ شَرِّ غَاسِقٍ إِذَا وَقَبْ وَمِنْ شَرِّ نَفَاثَاتٍ فِي الْعُقَدْ وَمِنْ شَرِّ حَاسِرٍ إِذَا حَسَدْ This is verse chapter number 13, 113 of the Quran, inshallah. <coughs> and this is called Surah Al-Falaq. Al-Falaq means the daybreak or the morning, when the day breaks, when they suddenly the night breaks down and the morning, the light of morning appears, the nur appears of the morning, is the time called Rifa to Falak. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala say, Qul, A'udhu bi Rabbil Falak is instructing the messenger of Allah say I take refuge with the Lord of the dawn the morning in Sharri ma khalaq from the evil of what he has created and from the evil of the dark night when it comes Amin Sharri Nafathati fil Ukad and from the evil of those who blow on the notes, practice secret acts of witchcraft, and from the evil of the envious one when he envies. So this is only five verses of the Quran. This short surah has five verses. Mufasirun are of the view that this is a Maki surah. You know the Quran surahs are divided into Maki and Madani. Those which were revealed in Mecca and those which were revealed in Medina. So this is one of the surahs that is, that is uh, regarded as a Maki surah. It was revealed in Mecca. And this Falak it starts by instructing the messenger of Allah to seek protection, to seek refuge. Why was the messenger of Allah being instructed to ask for protection, to seek refuge from Allah? There is an opinion in one of Sababu Nuzul. Sababu Nuzul is the reason why the surah was revealed. In one of the riwayat, it is said, which is a riwayah that Ahlul Bayt Mufassirun don't buy, don't accept. It is found in a, mostly in the Sunni traditions, Bukhari and other books. That the Messenger of Allah, one day, there were some Jews who were jealous about the Prophet and they went and sent witchcraft to him. 
they created some witchcraft and they went and buried it under the well where the prophet they used to fetch water in the well and they put the witchcraft under the well so therefore the prophet got sick affected by this witchcraft and then when the prophet was so ill the messenger the jibreel came and tell the prophet read this go and in this well and this well drink you find something buried there take it out and read this surah and immediately you'll be fine so by this say they're saying that the prophet of islam was bewitched which is an opinion which islam i mean quran disagree why we disagree that the prophet of islam was bewitched is because just logic does not accept that the messenger of Allah can be witch. As much as we agree that witchcraft can affect people, witchcraft is practice. But imagine if the prophet of Allah can be witched, then who cannot be witched? If the prophet of Allah can be affected by witchcraft, that means then, Allah can be... then where is Allah by that time? Allah has protected the messenger of Allah. Allah always defend and protect his messengers. So they cannot allow a, an enemy of the Prophet to come and wish the Prophet. If the Prophet could be wished and the witchcraft will harm him, his body, imagine now it could even harm his also mind. Then how can we trust that this Prophet is Masoom? How can we trust now that whatever he says from morning to Fajr, Monday to Sunday, January to December, everything is 100% message of Allah. Whereas we know that some of the days is bewitched. So there was no trust, there could be no trust that every message brought to him, brought by him to us is correct. Because if there can be an evidence that some of the days is bewitched, then we cannot trust his words 100%. But Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala tells us we should follow whatever he says. Whatever the Prophet gives you, you must take it. And in other verse, Quran says, This Prophet in Surah Al Najm, chapter 53 of the Quran, Allah says, this prophet Muhammad is not bewitched. He does not is not affected by witchcraft. He does not speak out of his own will. In huwa ila wahyi, everything he speak is from Allah. Therefore, we cannot accept that the messenger of Allah was bewitched. So we'll inshallah go as we go down to say why was the prophet seeking protection from witchcraft or from which other. We'll see the verse that is translated as witchcraft is nafathat. We will go to it, inshallah. We will see the meaning of the verse, inshallah. But Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, Say, I seek refuge from the Lord of Falak. Falak here means to split. Al Falak means to split open something that was one, to split it open and to divide it into pieces. For example, the reason why Fajr time is called Falak is because Allah split the night and brings the day from the night. So there's a splitting, there is a division, there's a splitting, and that's creating life. In Surah Al-An'am, we see that, that same word where Allah says in, in verse 97, 95 of Surah Al-An'am, In Allah habbi wa nawwa. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is the one who split open the seeds. And the stones, they, you know the seeds. Yukhrijul hayya min al mayyid. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala splits into pieces one seed and opens, opens it. You know when you take a seed of the dead and you throw it, you bury it under the soil. What happens? Allah splits it, breaks it, and what happens? A big tree comes out of that seed. It is Allah who split open those seeds and bring up the, the trees and the vegetables from those seeds we, slow, we, we throw in our gardens. Oh, so it's like when, like when, the, when it splits apart, 
That's when the roots come out. That's when the roots come out and the tree comes out. Because there was a seed when we throw it in the garden. Allah is the one who split it open. And the, the roots come out and the tree comes out from the vegetation. So it is Allah, inna Allah faliqul habbi wa nawwa. Yukhrijul hayya min al mayyid. By doing so, Allah creates a life out of dead. You see, when you throw a seed in the garden, it's dead. But Allah creates a live vegetation. Yukhrijul hayya min al mayyid. Allah can bring a life, a life out of death. And Allah is the one who split, bring death out of a life. If you are alive, Allah can cause you to die. Out of your life, create death. That is Allah. That is Allah. Allah. Then what do you think? Why do you deny Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala? You see, this is where we were reciting in Surah in, in Dua Iftita. Alhamdulillah, Khalik al Khalq, Mujir al Fold, Musahil Riya, Falik al Isbah. This verse you found it also in Surah Al An'am, verse 96. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, the one who split open the mornings. It was dark, Allah split the dark into light. day, light comes. So that's why we call it Falat, the day break. Something breaks out. Come out from something. A night comes, a light. The day come out of the light. So like the sun um, rises. Sun rises from the darkness. It appears. It breaks down the darkness. It comes out from the darkness. Like so, so that is why I call Fa'kul Falak. In other verses also of the Quran, Allah has referred to this way as Falak also can mean the creation, the whole creation. The whole creation also can be referred as falak. For example, the reason why the whole creation is referred as falak is that when Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, even the whole universe, they are also referred as falak. The, the creation, all creation of Allah is referred as falak because Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala breaks down the state of nothingness and brings life. From the state of no life, to the state of life. So that is why Falak is referred as Falak. Kul a'udhu bi rabbil Falak. Say, I seek refuge, protection from the Lord of Falak. The Lord of everything that splits and gives life and gives place to the other things. I seek protection from the night, from the dawn, the daybreak. So whatever you can give a definition of the word, Allah seek protection. Allah is instructing the Prophet to seek protection. Min sharri ma khalaq. From the evil of that which he has created. Normally, does Allah create evil? No. Min sharri ma khalaq. Why do you seek protection from evil of the, the creation of Allah? Generally, everything Allah creates is good. Yes. Everything. Nothing is bad. Even the things that are haram for us, like the pork, the pig, they are good. They are good in nature. They have their own jobs. So don't have this mentality that when you see the pig, you must throw the stone. <laughs> you know, Muslim kids, every time they see the pork, they run after it. It's haram, haram. They throw stones. Because it's haram to eat doesn't mean it's bad. Oh, like, do not judge a book by its cover. Yes, don't judge a book by cover. Everything Allah created is good in nature. But why do we seek Allah's protection from the evil of what he created? So everything is good in nature, provided but it follows its laws, what Allah has put, occupy its position, do whatever Allah has asked it to do. If you change the position of that, if you change the principles, Everything can cause harm. For example, do you know that uh, sugar is good? But if you drink one kg of sugar at the same time, what will happen to you? You get sick. Sugar diabetic, you are going to sick to get sick. Sugar is good, but if you use it badly, 
you are going to get sick. So we must ask Allah to protect us from the harms of the sugar. Yes. Allah created the sugar, but if we misuse the sugar, it will harm us. May Allah protect us from the harm of the sugar, for example. See, for example, Allah created a bacteria, for example. Yes. You know, some, some of bacteria are good. The bacteria are good, but they are only bad when they, when they are in the wrong place. Like toxic. Toxic, and they get into human body, they cause disease. But when they are outside, in their own environment, they are okay, they are doing their job. Every bacteria in the environment has its own use. But when we attract it in our body, it causes us harm. So we ask Allah to protect us from the harms of that which He created. Allah did not create harm, but misusing what Allah has created causes harm. That's why we say, Min Sharri. We ask Allah to protect us from the harms of His creation. Now, this one takes us to even another example. You see the arm, the weapon. If you buy a gun, for example, is, is it, the gun is good or bad? Generally, it's good or bad? It's good. Why is it good? It's for self-defense. It protects you from your enemies, from the tortoises, from the criminals. When they come, you can pull it out and shoot the tortoise and you are saved. But imagine if now the gun, you point it at your friend. Or at your father. Or at your mother. It becomes bad. Because it's used, it's used against your friend. It's used against a harmless individual. So like fire, it's, 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 it brings light, but then if you... Misuse it, it's bad. It's bad, it's bad. Fire is good, we use it to cook, we use it to bry. But if you misuse it, you burn people's houses. You yeah. can kill children by using the fire. So everything Allah created is good, but if you misuse it, it creates harms. That's why we say, Min Sharri Ma khala. We ask Allah to protect us from the harms of that which He created. وَمِنْ شَرِّ نَفَاثَاتِ فِي الْعُقَدِ وَمِنْ شَرِّ غَاسِكٍ إِذَا وَكَرْ And we ask Allah to protect us from the evil of the dark when it enters. The darkness. Mufassirin, they say, darkness normally represents it's a time where the criminals, the opportunistic people, they cover themselves at night like this, and then they come and cause harm. Now, for example, we have load shedding. Load shedding also come in this verse. So, I mean, Shari, Ghasikin, now the darkness has entered, now we are in the load shedding. <laughs> <laughs> so we ask Allah to protect us from the evil of load shedding. Because when the load shedding comes, that's where the criminals move around our yard. They want to see our alarm systems are not working, our security systems are offline. Now the criminals want the opportunity to come and break into our house and steal. So this is the time we seek Allah's protection. So in time, everything, everyone, mostly the criminals, they use the darkness to, to come and infiltrate and cause harm. At the same time also, even the witchcraft, the witches, the jinns, all of bad spirits, they want to take advantage of the night. That's why in the night there's so many things that are happening. <coughs> when the darkness of the night comes, you must ask Allah's protection from the darkness of the night. Yeah? Now, the last second, the, the following verses were min sharri nafasati fil uqad. And we ask Allah to protect us from the evil of those who are those who are splitting in the north. Like, there is people who are, you know, spitting. Spitting. Oh, yes. Emitting some saliva from the mouth by blowing. Blowing in the nose. There are people who use, use this, this method of spitting venom. You know, they're like a snake. They spit yeah. venom. When you attack a snake, you can stay near and spit the venom. There are people who spit those words against other people to, for witchcraft. Mufassirun, they say some, this verse can mean those who are witchcraft, those who are practicing the magicians, 
they will start maybe at night or in the day, call your name and send some harms using their words and they are spitting in the, in the, they are blowing into their nose. Oh. So we seek Allah's protection from this kind of evil. But also the verse can mean, nafasat can mean anything that is used, spelled into your ears, into your ideology, into your imagination to derail you from the path of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. To take your iman away from you. For example, Mufassirin, they give an example that in this verse, Nafathati fil Okad, it can mean some women, for example. Some women use to speak words to the ears of their husbands that will cause their husbands to lose their iman. Let's say maybe tomorrow you are going to the path of Allah. It is a time to go in the path of Allah for jihad, to fight in the cause of Allah. And then your wife, the whole night is telling you, don't go, don't go. These people are going to kill you. Don't go. In the morning, you listen to your wife. You don't go to fight in the cause of Allah. Those also are referred as nafathat. Because those women, they used to use their words, spitting their words into the ears of their husband. And then their husband will lose the iman. For example, this technique is used today, where if you want to kill politicians, business people, they send some spying women. The women will come and then they will appear that they love you and then you marry them, but their job is to steal information from you and for you to give them the information of your state. Let's say you are the country's chief spy. Every country has a chief of intelligence. That person holds all the secret of the country. Nobody must know that person's information. The phone, the WhatsApp, everything is protected. So now they will send a woman to you who will come and split venom into your ears. I love you, husband, I love you, until you tell him the password of the phone. Then you, they steal that information, they send it to the enemies. These are the verses also, Mufassirin, they say, some women also are included into the verse وَمِنْ شَرِّ نَفَاثَاتِ فِي الْعُقَدِ Those who, who blow into the knots. The women can blow using their charms, using their perfumes, using if they can blow into the knots of men and open their secret halves. So this is one of the, first, the, 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 the tafsir of وَمِنْ شَرِّ نَفَاثَاتِ فِي الْعُقَدِ but also in general refers to everyone, everything that can put some words in your mind, in your ears, in your heart, to take you out of the path of Allah. Anything which can be a TV program, today we have this TV program, the cartoons, the channels on the television, on our phones, that teach us haram things, that take us out of our iman. This thing, they don't tell us exactly that we mustn't be Muslims. They just show you certain things and then until you get used to it, until you do it, they have, they are like blowing some venom into your mind. So that's it. Now witchcraft is no longer that one of Magogos, Kokwanes, who go and make things and then they wish you. Now they can wish you on a television. When you are watching on DSTV, they are busy wishing you. They are busy saying that Nafathati now is no longer on this witchcraft. They can even say it on DSTV program. Have you seen these cartoons that are doing funny things? And at the same time when you are watching these cartoons, you think you are just watching a program. But at the same time, they are witching you. They are blowing some ideas in your mind until you are no longer Muslim in your thinking. In your action, you're no longer Muslim. You're just Muslim by coming to masjid. But they have changed your psychology. So therefore, there is so many things that now that are falling within this verse of nafathat fil uqad. Those who blow into the knots, causing harms into our hearts. Why was the Prophet asking protection from this? Does it prove that the Prophet was affected by this? No. The Prophet was always asking protection from Allah, for example, from the hellfire. But he was never going to go to hellfire. 
He was asking protection, for example, from sinning, but we know he was ma'asum. So every, even the witchcraft he was asking protection for does not mean he was bewitched. So the idea that the Prophet was bewitched is totally against the Qur'an. I just want to read you verse number 5 of Surah Al-Furqan to complete this argument that the Prophet cannot be bewitched. Uh, Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim In verse number 7 of Surah Al-Furqan Chapter 25 وَقَالُوا مَا لِهَذَا الرَّسُولِ يَأَكُلُ الطَّعَامِ وَيَمْشِي فِي الْأَسْوَاقِ لَوْ لَا أُنزِلَ إِلَيْهِ مَلَكٌ فَيَكُونَ مَعَهُ نَذِرٌ They were questioning about the prophethood of the prophet Based on the, on the idea that What kind of a prophet is this? He's eating food He is walking on the market Going to buy Selling, what kind of a prophet who is like us, just eating any food like us, going to the market to buy and sell? Why is it Allah not sending him an angel to be doing all the errands for him, you know? Doing all of the things for him. Why must he, must he go to the market? Why doesn't he just close the eyes and do magic and send the angel to the market? So the people were asking, expecting the prophet to be a miraculous a magician. أو يلقى إليه كنز أو تكون له جنة يأكل منها. They say, why is this prophet poor like us? Why didn't Allah give him a big, mansion. a big farm and a big mansion so that he can be eating and enjoying life, having good life? Because the prophet was like everybody. The prophet was not rich. He was wearing normal clothes like everybody. He was not among the rich. He was among the poor. But the people were now questioning about his prophethood. Because what kind of a prophet who doesn't have money? People now, normally they measure people according to what they have. Which house they have. What car they drive. This thing was, was there even the time of the prophet. So if you don't have money, they don't listen to you. So they were also not listening to the prophet say, why is it Allah not giving him money and a mansion and a, a big garden so that he can be eating freely without working? They now concluded by saying, you are following but a man who is bewitched, a bewitched person. How can a person be a prophet of God but he doesn't have money, he's poor. He doesn't have a garden. He doesn't have a house. He's struggling going to the market to buy and sell. He's living a poor life. How can he, how can he be a, a messenger of God? Some people now, because of that, Prophet doesn't have worldly things. They say this man is bewitched, is majnoon, mashur, is sihr. He has been affected by witchcraft. So Quran say. Quran say by concluding in tabiuna illa rajal masura unduru kaifa dorabu lakal amthal fadalu fala yastati una sabila tabaraka ladi in shaa jaala laka khayran min thalika jannatin tajri min tahtihal anhar. Allah say, look at example that are being given by these ignorant people. Anyone who think that Prophet can be bewitched, Quran is, is, is referring to him as an ignorant person. Quran say, blessed is Allah, who whenever he wants, if he wills, he could have given his messenger, khayran min dhalik. Better, better thing than what they are asking Allah to give the Prophet. So this is an, a verse, the whole Surah Al-Furqan is confirming the Prophet of the Prophet. But one of the idea the Quran is against is the idea that the Prophet has been bewitched. Therefore, no one must say that the Prophet was bewitched. So the Prophet is not Majnoon, is not Mashur. This was the claims of idol worshippers and the Jews against the Prophet. And after the demise of the Prophet, during the time of compilation of Hadith, we have this thing called Israeliyat. There are some Jews who embrace Islam, and they were plucking Hadith in this compilation of Hadith, both in the Shia books, in the Sunni books, you find this Israeliyat, the Hadith. That, actually, this Hadith, they did, they discredit the Messenger of Allah in the form of Hadith. 
You read a hadith, you think it's a good hadith, but it is discrediting the Prophet. So one of the discrediting the Prophet, they say the Prophet was bewitched. No, the Prophet can never be bewitched. The last verse says, and we seek Allah's protection against those envious, envious when they envy us. One of the other forms, source of evil, is the envy. You know what's the envy? What's the envy, Sheikh? Jealousy. 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 Or angry. Jealousy. When you are jealous mm -hmm. about other people, when other people do something good, or they have something you don't have, or they have something you have but you you don't want them to have it, so you feel jealous. That feeling is a human nature. We all have it. Yes. When some child become number one in your class. You feel jealous because you wanted him to be, you wanted to be number one, but you are not blessed with that. So all we have this disease is every human has that thing in him. But when it's reached a level where it controls you and then now it makes you act, <coughs> whether you wish to destroy other people's blessings because you don't have it, it's called now jealousy. It has reached a level where Allah now condemns it is one of the evil. Every day you must ask Allah to protect you from the people who are jealous of you. Yes. Because these people who are jealous of you can destroy you. Because Allah is now referring this as a source of evil. So in this surah, Allah is showing us sources of evil. So in this last, the source of evil is jealousy. And this is a dangerous disease. If you feel somehow you are jealous about somebody, you must ask Allah to protect you from being jealous. In one of the hadiths, it is said that the Messenger of Allah has said that try your best not to be jealous for your classmates, for your fellow peers, because jealousy eats good deeds as the fire eat the firewood. You know the firewood? You can pull up a fire and put the firewood inside. It will chow all the firewood. If you have good deeds, but you are jealous, that jealousy will chow all your good deeds. When you go to Allah, you don't have nothing in your account. The account is empty. Ask Allah, but I prayed. There's but no I mind. was but I was giving <clears throat> charity. I was sharing bread with other kids. I was helping. What happened to my good deeds? Allah say no. Every time you are jealous, your good deeds is deleted, deleted, deleted. So you will end up, your account is empty. You are broke. So if you don't want to be broke in front of Allah, don't be jealous, inshallah. This is one of the source of evil. So inshallah, in conclusion, this surah is asking us protection, is teaching us how to ask protection from the source of evil. One of them is the night, the darkness of the night, is those one who are jealous of us, is those who are witchcraft, practicing witchcraft, is those people who are whispering ways of discouragement in our ears from our own path, from our own iman in the path we take. Sometimes you take a path, you decide to do a project, but somebody just comes and gives you negative weights. You're not going to make it. This thing is too heavy for you. How many projects were not done because someone just put negative weights? This is what they call nafathati filoka. It can affect your life. It can affect your life. Remember, you wake up going to plan, maybe to do your garden. And someone comes and says, ah, this muraha will never grow. Don't even waste your time. Then because you are demoralized, you just go back home. You don't plan. Because that person has whispered words in your mouth, in your ears, that has blocked you from moving to your job, to do your job. And therefore, you didn't do what you're supposed to do. So we must ask Allah to protect us from the words of negative people. Yes. Those people who discourage us. Those people who don't give us courage to do our job or to carry our own goals and our own plans, inshallah. We ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to protect us, inshallah, from all these sources of evil, inshallah, and to give us tawfiq, to protect us against jealousy. Amen. Feeling jealous of others, inshallah, and to protect our hearts from falling prey to this disease of jealousy, inshallah. Amen. And to protect us also from the evil of those who are jealous towards us, inshallah. Amen. I ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to open our eyes, our hearts for Quran, inshallah, Amen. so that we can understand more.
that which we don't understand in the Quran, Allah to make us understand, inshallah. And that which we forgot, may Allah make us remember that which we forgot from the Quran, inshallah. Amen. Allahumma izzab islam wal muslimin, wa adhilla shirk wal mushrikin. Allahumma khfil mu'minin wal mu'minat, wal muslimin wal muslimat. Subhanak Allahumma wa bihamdik. Nashhadu an la ilaha illa ant, nastaghfiruk wa natubu ilayk. سبحان ربك رب العزة عما يصفون السلام على المرسلين والحمد لله صلوا على محمد وعلى محمد لا ما صلي على محمد وعلى محمد لا ما صلي على محمد وعلى